Now, this might be a bit of a controversial statement, but in my opinion, audio quality is actually way more important when it comes to creating great content than video is. And the thing is, everybody is just focused on getting the most expensive cameras, shooting in the highest, you know, uh, quality possible, but everybody is completely overlooking the importance of having good audio and great music selection and sound effects in your videos. So if you don't want to be one of those people who are overlooking it and you know, you don't want people to click off your videos because of the fact that you don't have great audio editing, then stick around because in this video, I'm going to show you all the key tips and tricks that I've learned about editing audio in CapCut. So hope you are going to enjoy and let's get right into it. So the first tip or trick I'm going to show you that will save you a lot of time in post-production is going to be syncing up external audio with camera uh, video, right? Some of you guys may be recording with an external microphone, just like how I am right now with this one. This microphone is actually not at all connected to my camera. So I have two separate files. One of them is the audio recording from this mic, and then I have the actual video and some internal audio from that camera as well. And what most people do when they get into a situation like this is they're trying to manually align the two, um, you know, tracks together to make it sync. And usually it's either not perfect or it takes a really long time, like even minutes to sync it up properly. And especially if you have a lot of video files and audio files that you need to sync up, this can take quite a while. Now, CapCut actually has this pretty amazing feature where if you just have both of them on the timeline and you select the two of them or highlight them, then you can just right click, click here on sync video to sound and you can see just like that in an instant, it was able to match up the audio of the two clips. So right now, my voice and the external audio is perfectly aligned. So this next one is going to completely blow your mind. So let's just say you've got your music that you want to be using in your video and you know, it's exactly the one that you wanted to use. It's perfect. But now you have to go ahead and edit, let's say, an entire cinematic sequence to the beat to make it seem good. Now, that can take a lot of time, right? Like finding all the individual beats, it's not something that you can just do in like half a minute. But CapCut also has a pretty cool feature for this where you can basically just select the music or the song that you have. You click here on Mark Beats and you will be able to choose from two type of beats, right? If you click on one, you will get basically these more quote unquote infrequent beats in the music. And then you have the other version as well, which is Beats 2, which will mark, um, you know, more of them. It will create more of like a fast paced rhythm. I'm not an expert about audio, so I apologize if I'm not using the right terms, but you kind of get my point, right? So right now it made all of these markers for you and it's exactly on whenever the beat's dropping. And now if I want to just very simply align all my uh, video clips and just not have to worry about it and edit it to the beat. I'm just going to select all the clips I want to use. I will drag and drop them and drop them in here. And as you can see, it aligned them automatically with the beat markers. So now if I look at it, it's perfectly aligned with the music pretty much. How cool is that? Like that just saves me so much time by not having to do that manually. So it is a feature I would highly recommend you guys to try out, especially if you are trying to, you know, not necessarily make some Hollywood production, but maybe you shot like a vlog on your vacation or you're making a YouTube video and you don't need it to be exactly perfect, but it can help you save a lot of time. Now, this next tip I have for you guys might feel like I'm going a little bit against the previous one, but trust me, I'm not. So this next tip I have for you is to edit one frame before the beat actually drops. And you might be wondering, what do I mean by that? So, you know, a video is made up of frames. So right now I'm just skipping th through the video frame by frame. So every single, you know, frame is a still image and the sequence of those still images is what actually creates this fluent video. In the music, Sometimes you have this where you want to make a cut, but it doesn't exactly line up with the beat drop. Like you can see the beat drop is actually here between two frames. So then you have to make a decision. Do you want to cut to be actually after the beat dropped or do you want to cut to be here uh, in this example, for example, like this here before the beat actually dropped? And in my opinion, if you want to be creating a really fluent uh, feeling viewing experience, you actually don't want to cut right after the beat, 
but one frame before the beat drops. Just take a look at these two examples, right? So here's one where we edited right after the beat. So it seems pretty normal, but you might be noticing that it almost feels like there is a slight bit of a delay between, you know, like the video and the audio. And then here's one where we edited the cuts so that they are one frame before the beat actually drops. So if I go ahead and line these two up next to each other, you might be able to tell even bigger of a difference. Now, right now you might be thinking, Vince, I understand that music and sound effects and, you know, all of these things make a huge difference in my video and they can take it from good to great or not having the right music and not having the right sound effects can take it from good to bad. But where do I actually go about finding all these sound effects? Where did you find this amazing song from? And how can I find the exact songs that are going to allow me to convey the exact emotions that I want through my videos and make the viewer feel and experience exactly what I want them to do. Now that's where the sponsor of this video, Epidemic Sound, comes in. Now at this point, I've been using their platform for over five years and the reason why is not just because of the fact that they have an amazing wide range of selection, both with sound effects and songs as well. And in fact, they have over 40,000 high quality songs produced by amazing and talented musicians, but because of the fact that their platform also works as my editing sidekick for finding the perfect songs and sound effects to match exactly the type of mood and the type of vibe I'm trying to to create in my videos. For example, their homepage is going to recommend you songs based on the songs that you have used in your projects previously that are going to fit the exact vibe that you are looking for in your videos. They have all their assets nicely organized into different playlists and categories so you can easily find exactly the type of music or sound effect that you are looking for. So whether you're trying to create a sentimental feeling, a sad feeling or a happy feeling in your videos, you will find a category that's going to contain songs that will create exactly that type of emotion in your viewers. If you want to really try them out and see how good it is for yourself, then click the first link in the description below and there you can get a free seven day trial so you can try out the platform and see how you like it yourself. So thank you Epidemic for sponsoring this video and let's get right back into the tutorial. All right, so the next tip is going to be a pretty good one as well. So let's just say you are editing a vlog, right? And it's very popular to have parts in a vlog where you are just speaking to the camera. And then in that case, you will just have the music nice and quiet in the background as kind of background music. But then you might transition to more of a B-roll cinematic section where the music will be louder again. And what a lot of beginners do is that they basically just make hard cuts in the actual song and then they just change the volume levels on the different ones. So for example, let's just say this was a part where I was actually speaking to the camera and then it would go into a cinematic sequence in my vlog. What most people do is they just go ahead, make a cut here in the music and here they lower it to let's say minus 26 and here they leave it at this. And what this does is this creates this um, kind of harsh viewing experience because all of a sudden you go from very quiet music to like super loud and it's just not that pleasant. If you want to do it a lot more professionally, what you can do is you can use keyframing in your audio. So here's how that looks like. Let's say this part of the video, I want it to be, you know, the music to be quieter. So I'm going to go ahead and just like I normally would, I will drag down the music to let's say around minus 30 decibels. But let's just say here, as it will almost go into the second clip, I want the music to slowly start coming up so it will transition into the next scene. So I'm going to select my music uh, track and then I will come here to basic and then here where it says volume, I will click here on this little um, icon, right? And here it says add keyframe. So you want to add a keyframe. You want to go to where you want the music to come up in volume again. So I'm going to have it be up at full volume here again. So now I will go ahead and change the volume to let's say like minus five. And as you can see, what this did is it created this ramp in the music where it goes from quiet to this volume very gradually, right? And then let's say here again, I in this part, I want it to be constant. So I'm going to add the next keyframe here to uh, lock that in. And let's say I wanted to go back to quiet again here. So I will just go ahead and pull down this keyframe to like 
minus you know 30 and you can see now we have this uh perfect ramp where it goes from quiet to regular um, volume to quiet again and you can also adjust these keyframes move them around um, you know play around with them but this in general in my opinion is a lot more professional way of going about it uh, than just you know simply basically cutting the music and then changing the volumes so this way you won't have those harsh transitions this next trick is going to be kind of similar to the last one as well but different so uh, what you want to do is whenever you have a song or even sound effect or something come into your video instead of having it just start very harshly like for example here you know i have this talking head part and then after that i would have my b-roll section part and then instead of having it like this where it goes from zero to full volume like this making it feel very unprofessional what you want to do is I would move this a little bit kind of under the previous clip and then here you have this white little um, circle with the black inside so you can actually click on that and drag it out and it will show you how many seconds uh, your fade is going to be and create a fade in your audio just like that. So now if I play this back again, it's going to go from a nice and uh, gradual quiet sound all the way up to the full volume. And so it's also kind of like what we did in the previous tip with keyframing, but it's just a lot quicker to do because you can always just go ahead and grab this little handle on the side of your music, drag it out and then create this fade. Now this next feature is going to come in very handy if you are ever shooting in more of a noisy environment. So for example, I have this clip right here that I actually shot on my balcony and it has a lot of noises coming from the city, right? Now luckily CapCut has this feature called Enhanced Voice which can help really reduce the background noise. Unfortunately, this is only in the pro version, but if you come here to audio and then you come here to Enhanced Voice, and you click on this, it's going to basically analyze your entire voice and the entire clip that you turn this feature on. And then after that, you are going to see a noticeable improvement. And then you will have this slider right here as well. And you will be able to select how much you want this effect to be affecting your clip, right? So how intensely do you want the voice uh, enhancement to be? Now, last but not least, we have J cuts and L cuts. So this is an old editing technique that has been around in movies and cinema and everything for forever. And uh, the reason why they are called J cuts and L cuts is because of the shape that they have on the timeline. So basically, this can be used in a bunch of creative ways to transition between scenes using just the audio clips. OK, so uh, what you want to do is basically to create, for example, an L cut. Uh, you would um, basically just extract the audio from your main clip. Let's say I have this one and you would create this L shape where the next clip is already playing right here. So I would place it like this, but the audio from the last clip is still going on. So for example, that could look something like this. So it just creates this weird kind of uh, sensation where you can still hear, for example, what the previous scene is saying for just like a second, but you already see the next scene. So it can be a cool way, especially for a vlog, for example, to make it feel a little bit more fast paced and to transition between the two scenes um, and also save some time. Right. But you can do, do it also the other way around. So this was the L cut. As you can see, the shape of it uh, is kind of like an L. Uh, letter and the other one the j cut you would do it the opposite way for example if i have this clip here with audio i will right click on it click on extract audio and now i have the audio track and the video track separately and then what i'm going to do is make this kind of cut where i cut into this first clip like this and then i will move the audio of the second clip um, to to line up with that one just like this and now if I play this back, even before the next scene came on, I can already hear, for example, these uh, skiing noises, right? So this again can be a great way to transition between two scenes, whether you're doing a vlog or anything like that. Um, so yeah, pretty handy technique as well. So now we really hope you guys enjoy this video and you got a couple of techniques from it that you are going to be able to use in your next project. And I know some of these were more beginner friendly tips or something you might already know, but look, we need to be reminded more often than we need to be taught. Check out Epidemic Sound in the description below. Sign up there for a seven day free trial to get your sound effects and your music from as well. So you can create really premium feeling videos. And other than that, I will see you guys in the next one.